Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the channel. Why'd you put the question mark? You know I'll read anything you put on there. Little uh, Anchorman humor there. All right, today's video is long overdue. I had a new machine that sent to me a while back, which is right behind me. So let's take a look at what I got. This is the Ortur LaserMaster 3. I believe this is Ortur's newest version of the LaserMaster. This is a really nice unit. I wanna give a huge thanks to Lelia over at Made the Best for sending this out to me. Now today, I wanna to go over this machine. We're gonna do a little test run on it on some leather. Gonna be cutting out some leather coasters, so that should be pretty cool. First, let's take a look at what all comes with this thing. So what you're gonna get with the machine is going to be, obviously, the engraver itself. Comes with, of course, all the manuals and paperwork that you need to run it. Has a nice little Ortur toolkit with some extra parts and pieces in there, which is pretty nice to have. And you've got some air hose fittings and some test material. Pretty standard for any laser engraver setup. And of course, you're gonna have your power supply, your USB cable, all that good shit to get this thing hooked up to your computer so you can get to getting. Now, they also send you a really nice pair of safety eyewear. These things are pretty damn nice. I actually use these for my driving glasses. Makes everything brighter, helps with all those harmful UV rays, and of course, I use it with the laser as well. You definitely don't wanna be staring at that laser. It'll fry your eyeballs right out of your head. I know a guy that happened to him. Now, they were nice enough to send out a couple other accessories, one of them being this engraving platform here. This is pretty nice. You could set your material on it, and when that laser blows through, it's not blowing through into your tabletop or something that you don't want engraved on. It takes all the beating right here on this platform. The other nice feature about this platform is it's got some guide rails right here that have thumb screws. It's very easy to use. You can loosen them up. You can move this around, and it's got another rail right here that goes up and down. So you can take a piece of material, if you're trying to pump out a bunch of the same thing, you could put it right in the exact same place every time, which allows you to keep the origin in the same place on the laser engraver. So that way you don't have to constantly zero that axis every time you go to cut a piece. The other thing that they sent was this Ortur Air Assist. It's a pretty simple unit. You just plug the Air Assist hose right into the back of it, and then it's got like a quick attach where you can press it in and pull it right out. It's very easy, and then you have your power cord, and then it has a little thumb dial on it to control the air pressure. But what I have noticed is that the air assist, in my opinion, and this cutting platform, I feel like these are kind of a must have. It makes the cutting process a lot easier. You get way cleaner cuts, and I feel like the air assist makes the laser engravers run more efficiently. All right, moving on. Now we are going to talk about all of the cool features on the Ortur Laser Master 3, AKA, LM3. That is the cool way to say it. If you want a little bit of street cred in the laser engraving industry, I would go with LM3. While talking about these features, I like to have something to compare it to. So we're gonna use the Ortur Laser Master 2S2. I did make a couple of videos on this a while back. Uh, one of them, just the whole process of laser engraving. And the other one was how to set up and use the rotary tool. So the first thing I wanna talk about here on the LM3 is the physical appearance and the build quality of this engraver. I'll definitely say it is a step up from the 2S2. All the drives and the motors, all that stuff is all concealed inside the enclosure of the engraver. The cord management is a lot better than what it was here on the 2S2. You can see there really was no cord management on this one. On the LM3, you don't have a drag chain, but the way they set up the cord management, it's very similar to the way a drag chain would work. They have different spots where you can zip tie all the cords right to the frame of the engraver, and it acts in a way like the drag chain would. Another nice thing about this LM3 is with the air assist, the air tube goes right into the laser head, where on the 2S2, it actually has a separate nozzle right here. It's like an attachment that you have to put on the end of the laser head in order to get the air assist. On the LM3, it's all kind of built into that laser head, which is really nice. The next feature I really like is when you're setting up the laser head to cut material, there's a certain gap or distance that you need to have between that laser head and the material. And with the 2S2, they give you this little metal cylinder. It's like a gauge that you would put between the material and the laser head. You have to move the thumb screw, pull that out, and just hope that you don't lose this. 
With the LM3, it's all built in. You can put your material in there, and then it's got a little kickstand. You just push the kickstand down, you adjust the thumb screw, you move the laser head down to the material, then you can move that kickstand back up, and that's it, the distance is set. Moving on to the rotary tool. Now this rotary tool, it's really nice. You can engrave cylinders, cups, tumblers, whatever the hell you want. Now on the 2S2, you have to actually unplug the wiring from the Y-axis motor, and then you would plug it into this roller, and the roller acts as your Y-axis, which really isn't too bad, but they did step it up a little bit here on the LM3. It actually has its own port here on the back of the unit, where all you have to do is plug your rotary tool right into that port. You don't have to worry about disconnecting the Y-axis from the gantry. Then once you have your rotary tool hooked up, all you have to do is flip a switch that takes it from the Y-axis over to the rotary tool. It's very easy on the machine setup end of it, machine, but you still have to go into light burn and change some of the settings if you wanna do any engraving with the rotary tool. While we're on the subject of the rotary tool, another really great feature on this unit, which is an accessory, it doesn't come with the engraver, is it actually has legs that attach to each corner of the engraver, so you can just lift it up, turn those legs out, and now your engraver is set up in an elevated position where you have plenty of room to put your rotary tool underneath it and get that clearance that you need from that laser head. Unlike the 2S2, you might recall one of my previous videos, I actually used cans of Keystone to elevate it. Uh, you kind of have to get creative with this machine. It doesn't have legs that attach to it like this one. So that is definitely a feature that I'm going to like. Convenient. The next thing is the cut dimensions on the LM3. This one is 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters, which you can convert that to inches if you'd like. It's pretty much the same on the 2S2. I think this one's like 390 by 410, so surface area wise, they should be exactly the same. And the other big difference between these two machines, machine, is the LM3 is a 10 watt diode laser and the 2S2 is a five watt diode laser. Now the interface on the LM3 is definitely different than the 2S2. It's got a nice clean facade here and you've got an e-stop button here in case you have uh, some kind of an emergency situation. You can just whack the shit out of that e-stop, shut the machine down. You also have a key switch here which I think turns the laser head on and off. And then you have your on off button which has a variation of colors which tell you if it's in program mode or on or off or if there's a fault. There's a whole sequence of flashing that this thing does. Subscribe. I guess it's just something you gotta get used to. Other than that, on the opposite corner over here, you've got the antenna for the wireless, which we'll talk about in a second. You've got your USB jack and your power supply plug-in. One other really cool feature that the LM3 has is that it is wireless. So you have here the wireless antenna. You can actually connect this thing to your phone or your computer, any other wireless device. And I believe that there is an app for this where you can do engraving off the app. I have not messed around with that yet. I definitely wanna do some experimenting and I'll probably have another video where we kind of go over the app and how it all works and if it's any easier than it is using the computer-based software. So overall, both these machines will get the job done. The LM3 definitely has a lot more features, a lot more functional, more user-friendly, but there is a price difference. You want all those extra features, you're gonna have to pay for it. The 2S2, you can get these things on Amazon for right around $300. The LM3, you're looking somewhere in the $750 range. Yes, you're looking at double the price, but you also get probably over double the features on this thing. Not to mention having the option of a wireless connection and the use of an app. Now, just to be very clear, I am not an expert on these laser engravers. I'm still in that learning process, figuring these things out, but I will say, no matter what level you're at with these laser engravers, they're fairly easy to use, even as a beginner, and you can get even way more intricate as an expert and take these things to a whole nother level, and that is one thing I really like about these machines. Machine. So if you are looking for more information, more of the specs, more of the features on these Ortur laser engravers, I highly recommend you check out Ortur's YouTube channel or their website, and they will have all the information that you need. So with that being said, let's test this thing out. So what we are gonna make today is a coaster with the Spicer Designs logo on it. And we're gonna make this coaster out of leather. Yellow leather, red leather, 
something I do before all my videos to practice. I'm getting pretty good at it. So we're gonna try out some leather on the LM3, see if we can do some engraving, and then we're going to cut out the coaster. So let's see how it does. We're all hooked up to Lightburn. That is the software that I like to use with the laser engravers. It's a pretty popular software for these engravers. You do have to pay a subscription fee for it after the trial period, and I will have download links in the description. So we've got the LM3 all hooked up. Yeah. Oh, we've got our cutting surface here. We've got the air assist all hooked up. We've got our thumb control right here for the air pressure. So another thing I like to do before I cut any kind of material is do a little bit of a test run just to test those settings because every different type of material that you use on these engravers is gonna require a different power output, a different cut speed. The best thing you can do with that is to document all of that, keep a little notebook, and write down all the settings that you prefer for certain materials so you can go back to it and use it as a reference later. Now I already found some decent settings for the leather. Not saying that they're the best settings because I am still a beginner on these engravers, but I did a couple of trial runs and it works. So that's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna jump on Lightburn now and I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to take any image, import it onto the Lightburn software and get it ready to where we can actually engrave it onto a piece of material. <laughs> oh sh**. All right, so we are on Lightburn right here. Uh, over here on this side, your settings might be different. Uh, you can configure this stuff however you want, but you can see down here with your tabs, you've got your laser, um, your cut layers. This is an important one. Mostly I use the move, the laser, and the cut layers. So we're gonna import an image. I'm gonna go to my downloads. Here you can see it imported the image of my logo. And then up here, you'll notice the width and the height. I have mine set to inches versus millimeters. And when I move this in and out, you can see those dimensions change. So the first thing I wanna do, it's really easy. We're gonna just right click on the image. We're gonna hit trace image. You can see here that it's already determined where all the edges of the lines are. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And there is our logo. So that part's pretty easy. Import the image, you trace it, and now you have something to work with. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create the border for this coaster. We're gonna click on the square tool we're gonna draw ourselves a square, and it always helps to keep this unlocked. And now we're gonna type in our dimensions. I wanna make this 3.75 inches and 3.75 inches. So now we have our square that is the size of the coaster that we want. You can see that it's obviously smaller than the logo. So we're gonna click on the logo and we're gonna shrink this thing down and make it fit nicely into our coaster. Right there looks good. Now that looks kind of stupid with those real square edges, so we're gonna use this radius tool and we're gonna add a radius on all these corners. All right, so now we have the basic layout of our logo coaster here. Now we're gonna divide this up into different layers because I wanna fill the letters on the logo and I want to cut the line on the outside border of the coaster. So you can see here on this first layer, we clicked on it and this is our layer, the double zero, the black layer, and we have it set to fill instead of line or offset fill. And then we're going to come down here. We want to only do one pass and I want my speed inches per minute to be 150 and my power to be at 80%. Now when you're figuring out your speed and the power on the laser, that's why it's nice to have a test piece. You can kind of mess around with those settings, do something really small, do a small engraving, do some cutting so you can get those settings dialed in just right. That way you're not wasting material. All right, that layer looks good. Now we wanna to go to the border. We're gonna click the border. And on this one, we actually wanna cut the material. So we're gonna have a little higher output on the laser and we're gonna slow the speed way down and we're gonna make multiple passes on that thing so it'll cut all the way through that leather. So now we're gonna create another layer. We're gonna hit this O1 or the blue layer and you can see it popped up here and it already gave us the option for a line, which is what we want. And we're gonna set this at 100% on the laser output. And we're gonna run this at 20 inches per minute. And I'm gonna make four passes on it, just so I know it cuts all the way through. Ow! Ow! Damn it! I need to quit moving this stuff around. All right, let's get this fired up and cut some leather. All right, we got the gap set for the laser to the material. 
Got the air assist all hooked up. All we gotta do is turn it on, it's pretty quiet. So now I'm gonna get that laser head positioned right in the bottom left corner of the leather and then we can start our cut. Let's rock and roll. If you're new to laser engraving, you don't wanna do this inside your house because it puts off some pretty nasty fumes and smoke and I still don't have a ventilation system set up out here in the shop, so I'll probably have to crack a door. Well, I must say that thing did an amazing job on this. That cut only took eight minutes to do. And if I was better at this machine, machine, I probably could speed it up and make it go even faster. Now after you get this thing cut, it's got a lot of charring and you get that burnt leather smell. So I just used Simple Green and I sprayed it onto a microfiber rag and I just kind of wiped it down. You can still kind of smell that, that burning smell from it. And then I'm gonna use a sealer and get this thing sealed up so it's protected and waterproof. Obviously it's a coaster, so you don't want that water to ruin the leather. Now the only thing left to do after I get this thing sealed is to test it out. And for that, I'm gonna need the Keystone Girl to bring me out a cold one. All right, let's see if the Keystone Girl answers. She might have me blocked. Hello? Hey, Keystone Girl? Yeah? Drop whatever you're doing, it's not important. What? I got an emergency out here, I need a Keystone pronto. On it. We'll see how fast she is. I gotta go, honey. Sorry. But mommy, my arm's broke. Have your sister finish it. Yeah! Wow, that was fast. You said it was an emergency. Thank you. You're welcome. I just have to try out my new leather coaster. Oh, really? Perfect. Why are your driving glasses out here? I use these with the laser too. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video on this Ortur Laser Master 3. Hopefully I gave you a better idea of what this thing's all about and what it can do. I like trying new materials with it and uh, did a really good job on that leather. And I definitely wanna do some more experimenting with the leather material. Now I will have Amazon links and links from Ortour's website for everything that you see here, the cutting platform, the Laser Master 3, the Air Assist, and I'll throw the rotary tool in there as well. And I'll also leave some Amazon links for this leather material. So if you like this video, do us a huge favor. Just hit that like button, helps us out a ton. And if you wanna see more videos like this, well, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do. Actually, second favorite. But those Third are... favorite. I'm thinking of other things right now. <laughs> that was stupid. That was really stupid. I know you think of the good in these. I know. Do I trust you touching these? No, they're all about 11 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so when you take them Where off... Where are you? Right down here. <laughs> <laughs>